This video is going to go over how to use pivot tables in Excel to do some hourly utility build data analysis. So the first thing we're going to do is try to plot the average kilowatt hour used for the following time periods. The month of the year, the hour of the day, and the day of the week. So what we're going to start with is our Excel sheet. So right now you have, should have an Excel sheet that looks something similar to this with um, either 15 minute intervals or hour intervals or maybe different intervals. But we also have the day of the year, the date, time, and the kilowatt hour used. Now, we want to look at, we need the month of the year, we also need the day of the week. We have the hour of the day already. So first we need to create columns for month of the year and day of the week. So let's go and let's create some new columns. So we're going to insert this one is going to be month of the year. And we can use a simple formula in Excel called month. So we go equal month. And we um, make it reference the date. So we want to change that format to general. And that's the first month. And then you can see it goes all the way down to 12 months. Good. So the second thing we want to look at Again, we already have hour of the day. We want to do day of the week. So we can um, look up what the date for 1-1-2011. So if we use one of our favorite search engines, Wolfram Alpha, and we can put in the date 1-1-2011. Let us do its magic. That was a Saturday. So let's go ahead and put Saturday in there. Insert day of the week, Saturday. And then we can type in the rest of the days of the week, like so. Now, to repeat, we just make it equal the la this one, equal the first one, and go all the way down. And as you can see, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, it just repeats. So now we have what we need. We need time, month of the year, day of the week, and kilowatt hour used. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a pivot table. So what we want to do is select all of our data. So we start with the top left corner, and then we, we hold shift and select the bottom right corner to select all of our data. Then we go into insert, pivot table. The table or range is already selected. And we're just going to put our pivot table in a new worksheet. All right, so now, the wonders of a pivot table. So the first thing we're going to do is look at our pivot table. And the first graph we want to make, so again, we want to look at our assignment, is the month of the year one. Okay, so let's go back to Excel. And we're going to go to our row labels as month of the year. So you can see we have 1 to 12. And what we always want to do is go to kilowatt hours used. So then we drag that into values. So right now, it's at sum. We don't want the sum, though. If we look at the assignment one more time, we want the average. Okay, so what we do is we go back, and we go to field settings, value field settings, uh, and the sum of the kilowatt hours used. And instead of the sum, we want the average. So we hit OK. And now we have the average of kilowatt hours used. So this is the average kilowatt hours used for those 15 minute periods. And what's nice about it is we can make some nice plots with this too. So just like usual. So it looks like the month where we use the least is August. And um, on average, or actually, I'm sorry, December, which is probably because of winter break. So um, that's sort of the monthly profile. Now you can already have gotten this sort of from your uh, utility bills, so it's not that impressive that we did this with a pivot table. But now is the real fun. So let's, we can just copy, so control C once we select our pivot table and paste it. And what's nice is now we can, instead of that, we do our second thing, our second assignment, which is hour of the day. So now we're going to look at hour of the day as our 
which we've labeled as time. And we're going to remove the month of the year field. And now we have the average kilowatt hours used for every 15 minute period of that day. So let's look at what this looks like. And this is for the whole year, remember. So now we're going to again insert column just to look at it. And it looks like you would expect, you know, in midnight, in the morning hours, starts really picking up at 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. and 7, and then sort of levels off during the midday, and then drops off precipitously um, when students leave the building and when staff leaves the building. So um, that's sort of what you would expect from this, which is very nice. So we'll do one more just because I want to finish this out. So again, our last one is day of the week. So we should expect on Saturdays and Sundays that we shouldn't have as much as the other times of the week. So let's look if that's the case. So again, we hit copy, we paste, and then we're looking at day of the week for our row labels, and we get rid of time. And now, look what's happening here. So let's go ahead, insert column graph. So, this sort of is a deceptive graph because it's not starting at zero. So we're going to change this. So we're going to have a, minimum, a fixed minimum of zero. And if we do that, we can see Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday are all the same. So that is not a good sign um, for, th for this for this building. We should end up seeing Sunday and Saturday being drastically different than Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So this is something we can talk about with a recommendation to the school. So that sort of concludes these, this pivot table assignment. And as you can see, it's much easier to do this than it would be to write your own formulas to average these kilowatt hours out. And that's the, really the power of pivot tables. Okay, so I hope you were able to spot my error in the last video, the last segment of this video, rather. The date here stays as the 1st of January for a while, but the day of the week is changing. So we don't want that. Obviously, we want the date to stay the same. So what we're going to do is we're going to have this day of the week equal the date. And then we're going to display it as custom. And what's nice about this is that if we type in four Ds, it will fill in the date. So, um, again, we go to more number formats, custom, and we type in four Ds. And that way, we're good. And then we're going to go we'll go this all the way down. So now Saturday is, as long as January 1st is there, Saturday is there. And then when it jumps to January 2nd, we go to Sunday. So that's great. So now let's see what happens to our pivot table when we do this. Pivot tables don't refresh automatically. So let's right click and hit refresh. Okay, so something weird happens here. And this is because Excel is still reading all those entries, not as the day of the week, but as the um, what the actual data in that cell is. The actual data in that cell is the full date. We're just displaying it as the day of the week. So now what we're going to do is convert this cell to just text. And how we do that is we use the text function. So the value um, that the text function is going to convert is the date. And the format that we want the text to be in is the full day of the week, which is, again, the four Ds for some reason. So we do that, and then we click all the way down. And now you can see that if we go back to our pivot table and refresh, we get a nice looking, much nicer looking chart. So something is a little strange here. It's that Friday is using less energy than Saturday. And um, this is something I wouldn't expect, but that's what the data is telling us. So that's what we see here. Hopefully you won't make this mistake just like I did when you're doing your project or when doing utility analysis. Thanks for watching.
This video is going to explain how to do part t 2 of task 4, which is find the time of day that each, p each of the peak demand periods occur that month. You also want to explain why you think the peaks occur when they do. So I'm not going to explain why, but I will f show you how to find the time of day that each of the peak demands periods occur in each month. So I've already done this, but let me um, first show you the raw data we're looking at. So if we look at this, the raw data, we have a couple different um, columns of data. We have our date, time, and our day of the week, and our kilowatt hours used. So what I did in our um, task four was to make this a little easier, task four part two, was I put the column that each of these things occur in. So the kilowatt hours in column G of raw data, the time is in column D, the day of the week is in column F, and the date is in column C. The other thing to notice is that we're just gonna I'm just gonna show you how to do January and you don't have to do the other ones. So if we look at month number one in raw data, month number one goes from row number two. all the way until keep going down all the way until 2977 so let's look at the formulas the first one's the easiest one we go from G2 to G2977, and we find the max of it. So that's the max kilowatt hour. And this should match up with the pivot table that um, we did in 4P1. So let's look. 74.916. Good. 74.916. So it matches up. The other thing that we want to look at is um, we want to know what time that occurred, what day of the week it occurred, and the date. Okay, so how we can do that is um, a sort of complicated formula, but not too bad. It's this up here. So this formula is, it's called the index formula. And what we want, really want the index is of one of these things in raw data. So we have D2 to D2977. Now what that is, is that's just the time um, array. So it's, you know, what time um, this occurs. And then to find which, when this max occurs, we basically just figure out, okay, where does B2 exist, which is the max, in the sequence where we were looking for the max, which was G2 to G2977. So that's the basic idea of this formula. You, so when you do this, you are able to get uh, the time there. So let's look at the difference between um, the time that the max kilowatt hour occurred and the day of the week. So the difference between those two formulas, the only difference is that we change this to an F because the day of the week is in column F. Same thing with the date is in column C. So that way we can get um, all of those things there. So you would repeat this and the only thing that would change um, for all the rows below this are your beginning number and your ending number. And that just has to do with when the month begins and when the month ends in your raw data sheet. So that's it for um, task four, part two.